There's this running joke that you're not a serious overlander unless you have a YouTube channel. I think that's dumb. Like, who would want to watch an overlanding channel anyway? All right, I needed a drink. This might be a long one. Because for once, I actually know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna tell you straight up that when it comes to overlanding, I'm still learning a lot. Like there are so many facets when it comes to overlanding that there are just things that I am not fully well versed on. But when it comes to like media, photo, video, these are the things that I actually went to school for. I've been shooting videos ever since they had VHS tapes and I was taking photographs with film and developing them myself. So I'm well versed in this kind of stuff. Not that I know everything because when it comes to this stuff, technology is moving faster than we can keep up. I swear you'll buy like a new camera or a new drone and then four or five months later, it's already obsolete because a new version of it just came out. But at some point you just have to reconcile with that and say to yourself, you know what? It's not about having the best and newest gear. It's about finding gear that works for you and that will create the content that you want. Now, before you click away, you might be saying, well, why do I need to watch this video? I don't even run a YouTube channel. I, I get that, but this is not a how to start a YouTube channel video. This is more so what gear do I use to capture my adventures? Whether or not you're publishing it online or whether or not you just want some way to hold on to the memories that you are making. And you don't need all of this stuff. You can start small, Start with the basics and then as you find that those are starting to be lacking because there are certain things you want to capture, then you can either upgrade that equipment or acquire new equipment. A lot of this stuff took me years to acquire, a lot of trading in for stuff and upgrading some stuff and yeah, I kind of just want to walk you through what I use and how I try to keep it as simple as possible. Now, if this is your first time kind of delving into this world and you're asking questions like, okay, well, what should be my first camera? Don't think about any of that. Like gear doesn't matter as much as knowledge. In its most simplest form, all you're trying to do is capture. And when I say capture, you're only really capturing two things, visual and audio. So that means that all of your gear is centered around capturing those things. So starting out with the visual part of everything, let's talk about the main cameras that I use. The main camera that I have that I use for all my videos is the Sony a7 IV, which I'm using to film right now. I can't show it to you because I'm, I'm filming on it. But this was actually the first one that I started with when I started this channel. This is the, actually, no, I had the Canon Rebel for my first couple of videos. Then I upgraded to the Sony a7, but this is old already. This doesn't even shoot 4K, it's that old. I do still keep this around though, because I use this for my photography work. For some reason or the other, even with the newer cameras that are out right now, this still, I still love the, the vibe and the photographs that this thing produces. I look at cameras the same way uh, musicians might look at a guitar. You can get a brand new guitar that just came out with all the bells and whistles and yet somehow it still may not produce the same kind of sound that an older guitar that came out back in the 50s or 60s. I look at cameras the same way. When it comes to photography, sometimes you want that old feel, right? Like I don't like getting a brand new camera for photography now sometimes because it's way too sharp and it looks too good and it almost looks fake. But this still has somewhat kind of like a film quality to it. So I use this for photography. I don't use it for video anymore because again, I use the Sony a7 IV for that. Speaking of the Sony a7 IV, I like it because it's a great hybrid between photos and videos. You can switch to photo and video and it does well for both. When it comes to lenses for these cameras, I don't like to carry a bunch of lenses with me. On this, I keep the Sony um, Zeiss 35 millimeter 2.8 lens. I like this lens. It's a little outdated. This was one of the first lenses that they came out with when this came out but I like the look of this. I like the, the images that this produces. And I also like the fact that it's small. It's a pancake lens. And so it makes this whole thing really, really compact for shooting. I go with 35 mil most times when I'm doing photography because 
it's wide enough to capture a scene, but not so wide that it starts to distort everything. I want to be able to show the rig the way I see it through my eyes. And I don't want to use like a 15 mil or a 20 mil and suddenly the wheels look too big or things get bowed out and it looks kind of, it's, it distorts the image. 35 mil and the 50 millimeter are the ones that will give you the closest resemblance to what the human eye sees. This is the Zeiss 50 millimeter 1.4. Again, an old lens that came out when their lines came out, but the clarity on this thing is so good. So I use this 50 mil for really close up shots. You get that really nice blurred background or bokeh, what they call it, right? Um, you get really good depth of field with a 50 millimeter 1.4 Zeiss. So the two lenses that I carry with me for photography and also for video is the 35 millimeter and the 50 millimeter. But for video specific only, then I will carry the 20 millimeter G lens from Sony and that's what's on the camera right now. I like that for vlogging and studio stuff and me talking because then it gives you a wide, a wide view and that you can see what's behind me whenever I'm vlogging. Carrying just three lenses challenges me to get the images that I want without bringing a whole bunch of lenses with me. Now moving on to specialized cameras, the DJI Air 2S. This is the drone that I like to use. I wanted something that had a little bit longer of a runtime. I also wanted something that would not be moved so easily by the wind. But prior to this, I used to have the DJI Spark, which was their smaller drone. And man, every time I tried to use that, one, the quality was okay. And two, it just kept getting blown around whenever it got a little bit windy and I, I couldn't get my stable shot. So I wanted something a little, bit with, a little bit with more heft. And the Air 2S is a great combination of that. The GoPros, I have such a love-hate relationship with these things. They fit anywhere. They're great when you need to get an angle that you can't get with a regular camera and it, it, you can put them wherever you want. It's just the image quality on these are not always going to be the best because I mean you're talking about a really small sensor compared to like a mirrorless or a DSLR full frame and so I don't use this as like a main camera I really just use this stuff for getting those trail shots anywhere I can put a small camera this this fits the bill for that I have two kinds this is the GoPro Hero 9 uh, decent but I heard that the GoPro Hero 8 actually is a lot better and the 10 is actually better than both of them this is what I got for Christmas this is the GoPro Max and this is a 3 60 camera it takes a while of getting used to because you have to take the footage from here bring them into your phone use the GoPro app to make the edits and then export it over into your computer where you're doing your main edit for the rest of your movie it's great though if you want to get that three those 360 shots the spheres or this makes it looks like you have more than one camera or that you have a camera crew following you because it's basically shooting everything you just mount it up you don't have to point it at anything you don't shoot everything in front of it above it below it around it and so you can kind of do spins with the camera it looks like you're spinning a camera i like to put this on the top of my rig because it looks like i can like shoot forward and then kind of turn it around and now it's shooting backwards so it looks like i have a camera up there that's on a swivel or something and that's good for that type of thing having two is good because then i can mount one of these like maybe on the hood this one always stays at the top of the rig or i can you know plug this into the back and shoot whoever's following me and and all that good stuff moving on to the audio part of capturing things for a long time i was running rode microphones but i'll be honest like i always somehow found them lacking there was something about rode mics that i just didn't like the sound of them and then I heard about Deity and this is the VMic D3 Pro and let me tell you this thing is awesome it sounds so good I plugged this thing in and I immediately was able to tell the difference in the audio I was capturing the only reason I stopped using this then you'll get this with any microphone by the way any shotgun microphone you put it on the camera and you're vlogging you're talking to it but the minute you face the camera to somebody and you're interviewing them They'll sound really, really good, but you behind the microphone, it's hard to hear you because the shotgun's not facing you. Or if I'm doing, like I'm showing something on the rig and this is painting, uh, pointing forward, I have to take it out, point it towards me, and then shoot whatever I'm shooting so I can be heard clearly. It just got really annoying taking it off and taking it on. So I decided to move on to their newest one, which is the D4 Duo. This is great because it's basically two microphones. So in here you get 
an option of either just the front microphone running or also front and rear. So what I normally do is I mount this to the camera facing the same direction as the camera. So when I'm vlogging, I'm sounding good. And then when I'm interviewing someone, they're sounding good, but then all I gotta do is move this little switch here. And now the rear is also capturing as well. So if I'm talking to someone and they're talking, you can also capture my audio when I'm talking, interviewing them. All right, so that takes care of audio and video. Let's talk about some of the little things that I also bring along with me. First off, filters. I only bring two kinds with me, an ND filter, this, is crucial. If you're shooting in the middle of the day, it's gonna to be too bright and everything's gonna be super exposed. Having an ND filter is like putting sunglasses on your lens. I moved up to the Freewell system. The reason why I like the Freewell is because they're magnetic. You buy the ring that attaches to your lens and then the filter and also the lens cap even are all magnetic and just plops on. I found sometimes that I want to be able to take the filter on and off really quickly and having it be magnetic is great. The good rule of thumb is to buy the filter, the biggest filter that you can get. Then instead of buying multiple ND filters for each of your lens, all you need is the one big filter and then get step-up rings that you put on your lens. It's cheaper to buy the step-up rings than to buy multiple ND filters, if that makes sense. So I just bring the one ND filter that I have from Freewell, and then I have a small one that's already attached to my small 35 millimeter lens that I showed you earlier. And then the last one that I use um, is the Polar Pro uh, anamorphic filter. But if you've ever seen my videos where all the lights look really cool and they're flared out, that's this filter here. Now another thing that I like to bring, I like to bring the Aperture LED light. This thing gets super bright. Like, I mean, it's at the lowest setting right now. If I were to put the booster on, like, look at this. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous how bright this thing is. And I like this because it's small. And I use this, if I'm vlogging and it's dark out and I need to be able to see myself, I will use this to light myself up. This is just a great all around light, but they give you like the cords for it to charge it back up. They even give you a, a mount that you can use so you can mount this to your, to your camera. Um, they even give you like rubber bands if you need to tie this to something. Some sticky pads. This is uh, if you want to diffuse the light even more. If it, this is too bright for you and you want to diffuse it even more, you can just add one of these onto there and that'll kind of give you some diffused lighting. And it, you see it, it's kind of, it curves um, on purpose. You can kind of diffuse your lighting even more. Very small, compact, comes in its own case and just makes it a lot easier to transport. Now, as far as little tools and stuff, I keep everything in a wandered bag like this. I have the charger for my camera. Now, I also have the Peak Designs clip. So on my photography camera, you get a little mount that you put at the bottom and it just allows you to click this into, the, into place. So you could put this on a backpack. This slides open like this. You put it onto a strap somewhere, like your backpack, your belt, um, something that goes on over here. You click that down and then you tighten it. And now it kind of just hangs on you somewhere. And then when you're ready to use it, you know, you just get your camera and you click it into place. And then when you're ready, just, you know, you press this little button here and it, it takes out, takes the camera out. It's very secure, it won't fall out. You just unclick this, take it out, start shooting, and then put it back in its holster. I have a, I have my Olight, it's a, it's a headlamp. Um, and so I use this if we're doing night shots, if we're doing like, if I'm gonna do like star photography and it's super dark, I need to be able to see my equipment, then I'll just throw this on. I like this too, because it doesn't have to be a headlamp, it can come off, but yeah, it comes off like this and then it's actually magnetic, so you can put it anywhere. Really cool little light, uh, not the most powerful, but I don't need it, the H1R, that's what it's called. I don't really need it to be super powerful. I'm only, I have flashlights that I already carry with me. This is really for when I just need to see my equipment really quickly. You know, when I'm doing like star photography or if I'm shooting something with long exposures at night and it's super dark, then I need to be able to see the settings. I need to be able to see the camera and what it is I'm punching in because I, I won't have any other source of light. But the one thing that I use a lot is this thing. And this is TSA friendly, by the way. This is the uh, small rig multi-tool. And this is a multi-tool specifically made for cameras. This comes with all the tools that you need, all the hex tools that you need, basic screwdriver, and then you have this big flat one. So instead of you looking for a coin to turn that little tripod thing, you can just use this. This is so invaluable for videographers and photographers because it has all the tools you pretty much need. This actually became so popular, small rig has 
bunch of different models now that has even more tools on it. Oh, I have my Sony remote also. You know, when you're doing long exposure shots, you don't want to touch your camera because you don't want shake. So you use a remote like this, press it and it'll turn the shutter on and, and then that slow exposure will begin. I've got a bunch of these, uh, just straps. If I need to strap something down, I carry a ton of those straps with me. And then the one thing that people forget to bring a lot is a cloth, microfiber cloth, clean your lens, man. I, and, and if you've seen some of my past videos, I have forgotten to do that. And there's like a little speck of something somewhere and then I see it in post and I'm like, ah, oh, crap. Make sure you bring yourself a cloth that you can wipe it down with. I use this too. I bring this with me. This is the Wandered uh, Veer 18 liter packable backpack. I, I carry all the stuff and I'll show you what I carry it all in. But I will bring this because there are times when we might leave camp and go on a little hike. Well, I don't wanna be lugging a humongous camera box or camera bag with me with all the equipment. I like to just leave that stuff in the rig and then I will deploy this. The whole backpack fits in of itself. So first you take this out and this is a cube and I'll show you that in just a minute. But the backpack just opens up like this. And this is great for camping. Matter of fact, at the Overland Expo that we went to, this is what I used. When I walked around and checked out other vendors, I was wearing this. Not a lot of storage, but you don't need that. I just needed something to hold my water bottle here. There's a small pocket in the front to carry stuff in there. And then you have uh, another pocket here, and that's where the bag actually gets stuffed into. But you can put your wallet, keys, and there's a little thing for your keys right there. And then the whole thing either opens from the side with a lockable zipper and you have a humongous space in there. Or you can also access it from up here. So if you need to get to your camera, you don't have to take the whole backpack out and go from the top. You can just kind of sling it to your side and open it from the sides like this and your camera is there. To secure your camera, that's where this comes in. You blow it up and it becomes this thing that stuffs inside there and you can put your camera in there and it'll protect your camera from bumps and whatever. You don't want to just put your camera in here. There's not protection in here at all. So you're going to need to use this. So that's what I like to do whenever we're going overlanding and camping and we're going on a hike, real quick hike, and I don't want to bring all my equipment with me. I can just pull out this packable backpack and I am good to go. All right, so let's talk things that hold your camera. So first off, I like to use this a lot. This is the Zayun, Zayun, Zayun. Uh, no one really knows how to pronounce the spelling of this company. This is the Weeble S. You want to get those smooth shots, this is it. Like, and, and this is actually bigger than it needs to be because I have this little handle on here. If this handle wasn't here, it's a lot more compact. Why I like this is because the way this thing folds up, it's so tiny. I ha I've had gimbals before where they're just huge like you have to put it all together and this has been the easiest thing to put together balancing a gimbal can be a pain in the butt right so what they allow you to do here is they allow you to lock in all this all these points first and then you can balance individual axes individually once everything's balanced and you unlock everything and make sure that your camera can be put in any position and it won't move. That's how you know it's well balanced. But I like the Zion Weeble S, one of the best um, gimbals that I've used and they're not super expensive. Sometimes they go on sale and you'll be able to get it for like 250. I got mine for about 275-ish, I believe. This is the Manfrotto 190 Go. I need to sometimes get angles, like really, really low to the ground. And what sold me on this is the fact that you can do that. Raise this all the way up, press a little button here and that unclicks like that. And then this can go in like that. And then all these can basically lay flat. You see how now my tripod lays really flat. So if I wanted to get a really nice low angle shot, this will handle that. Get this put back on. Yeah. I have to say, Manfrotto is like an industry leader and their tripods are not cheap. And yet, I always seem to have problems with the, the legs of their tripods. If you have any companies you'd like to recommend who makes really good tripods that are easier to deploy than this, uh, let me know. Because I've used Manfrotto my whole life 
just because a lot of photographers like them, but I have found that they've been lacking on me lately. The kind of tripod head that I use, I like to use the grip style, right? So this is basically, instead of you turning knobs and positioning it, you just press this button and then you can move it any way you want and then it locks in place. This is not gonna be good for video. Like you can't really pan like that when you want to. It's not good for that. In the event that I need to use a tripod for video, if I wanna put my camera onto a tripod and kind of move right to left and pan it smoothly, you're gonna want a fluid head. And so I got the one from Small Rig. I like it because it's small. I don't have this, I don't need a big fluid head. I'm not carrying a humongous cinema camera. So this works out. And basically I just swap this head up here with this and then I can put the camera on here. You can go kind of up and down with this really, really nicely and then it, it will slide right and left really smoothly. You'll see the difference between trying to use that and trying to use this, like this, you'll get a lot of jerky motions with this because it's not made for that. I really don't like using tripods for video anyway. Um, I only use it really for photography, long exposure type stuff. When it comes to videoing myself, the Mantis Pod Pro, I love this thing now. Like this is my main vlogging selfie stick slash mini tripod. It sits really small, but it also has a ton of different features. So you can basically put this together, right? And you have yourself now a selfie stick. It extends even more, like you can get this to go this way and then you can even take out this head here. You can put it up here, this slides in to here. And now you have an even longer selfie stick when you need it. But what really sold me about this, and I talked about it in my last video as well, was the fact that once you have these things kind of spread out like this, down here there's a little hook that comes out and you can hook this vertically to like your window, your car window or something. This goes to the back of the window and this sits on the side and you'll be able to have a camera basically pointing at you. Points directly at you and I don't need to have this tripod anymore because Basically, if I need to shoot myself, I'll just put this on the side of my rig. That's my tripod. They also have this little phone attachment that you can pull out and it kind of clicks open like this. And then this just locks into their plate. Let me see. I really like this Mantis Pod Pro, you guys. It's a little bit more expensive for what it is. It's basically a $150 selfie stick. But to me, it's more than a selfie stick. Like this is my vlogging tripod selfie stick combination that has everything I need it to do. And so for me, it was totally worth it, especially when I'm running and gunning a lot with my camera. All that gear, a lot of batteries, a lot of things to charge up. You're probably asking, well, how do you manage all the cords and whatever, and where do you carry that stuff? Uh, some people have brought this up. They've seen me use this in my other videos, but I basically just took a Pelican case. This is a Pelican 1200. And I added Velcro to the inside, and now I have basically just a charging station for everything. Right now it's really sparse, because again, I decided to not build on it yet. Uh, but you basically just get a power strip like this, then I can plug this into a Jackery or wherever I need to power things up. And everything I need to charge up is gonna be all hooked up to here. I won't go into this too much right now because I really wanna do a video on how I built this from scratch. But this has been the greatest solution because everything I need to charge, all can be charged in here. I don't have to go fishing around for cables for the camera and fishing around for cables for the drone and for the GoPros. Just pull this out. Plug this up into a Jackery, put all the batteries in there, leave it alone, and the next day, everything's already all charged up in here. But yeah, we'll do a deeper video on this later. One last thing, so where do I, how do I carry all of this gear? The system I run with are bags from Wander. This is the Hexad uh, All Access Duffel Bag. Actually, let me move you right back. Yeah, now you can see everything. I really was thinking about getting one of the Pelican air boxes, right? The cargo boxes that they have. But I found that having a soft pack for my camera gear is a, it works out better for me because in the back of my rig, space is already limited as it is. And having a hard case takes up a lot of that space. Having a one that can kind of that have some malleability to it, that can kind of compress and whatever, it's easier to fit into those tight spaces. You can open this thing up, and in here are the straps. So if you take out these straps that are in here, and then tie them 
for these points, like right here, then you have a backpack. But I never carry it that way. I, I just don't like it. I just would rather have a case. The very top, when you open it up, this very first lid, you have a slot for your computer. This will fit my 16 inch MacBook Pro. Then you have somewhat of a small space here. And this is where I usually will put my gimbal. And then you get a pocket on the side here that I tried to open earlier. And that actually reaches into, and what I put in here is I have this thing, which is a rain guard. This is really cool because you put your camera in here and then only the lens will poke out like right there. And you still have access to all the buttons, but you put your hand through here and you'll be able to manipulate all your settings. Then you'll be able to shoot in the rain without worrying about your camera getting wet. And then what I will normally do is I will take that wandered pouch that I told you about and I'll put that in here too. So any kind of like bag that I need to carry with me just gets stuffed in this side area here. Then when you open the main compartment up, the main compartment, you can still access everything that you just put in. But you now get these two separate areas where you get these camera cubes and these camera cubes can come out. So if you don't want to put a camera cube in here, you want to use it for clothing, you can do that. On one side, I'll have, this is already fitted for like my drone, GoPro and all, and my microphone and everything that miscellaneous stuff goes in here. And then on this side, this is where I, which has the thicker padding, the newer versions of paddings. This is where I put my two cameras and lenses and toolkits and whatever that I need for that. See these pockets here? You can access something really quickly in there. So what I like to do is I like to put my main camera in here. So as soon as I pop this open, I can just pull the camera out. And then here, I'll put like my mic. So if I need to access that really quickly, I just pop this open, my microphone is right there. And then it also has um, two little zippers here. So what I'll do is I'll keep cords for my monitors and stuff in one. And on the other side, that's where I keep all the batteries for the camera, like different batteries, because I need quick access to that as well. Remember that little tool bag I showed you earlier that I really like from Wander? They have these straps here where you can actually make it into a sling bag if you want, but it also, they made it so that you can clip it to the outside of their bag. So on my backpack, the Provoke 21, this clips onto the outside. And on this bag, I can clip it up here. You have these two little straps, like right here and you can clip these things right into there. So now I have access to all my tools on the outside without having to dig into this. What I found that when we're on the trail and I need something, I'll open the cargo area of my Jeep. There's a lot of stuff back there and I don't wanna have to pull out my big bag, especially if it's a Pelican and there's only one way in. I have to pull that out, put it on the floor, on the dirt, open it up, grab what I need. I don't wanna have to do that, which is why I like these quick access area so I can pull the camera out pull the microphone out really quickly and then I can get the batteries from here and then if I need my tools they're right there without me having to dig into the bag or pulling the bag out of the vehicle if you don't have a way to organize that stuff or get access to it quickly you might miss a shot so I like going with this kind of system access to everything that I need on the outside without me having to pull this bag out of the cargo area. I don't know how long this video is by now. Honestly, I can talk about this stuff for hours because photography and videography has been a passion of mine way before even overlanding. So all I'll say to you is just get good with what you have, right? You don't necessarily always need the best and newest and, and learn how to set your apertures and set your ISOs and set your shutter speeds and get good footage and good photos, learn how to edit, learn how to color correct, learn all that. Start with the basics and, and build from there, especially if you're new to this. But that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure you hit that like button subscribe to our channel, and also consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to make more content like this. And as always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time. Oh, there must be some dust in here because I'm starting to feel it. Oh, that's gross.